you want to get a cinematic camera look like this one inside of Blender, in this video I'll show you all of the settings, all of the methods that are used to achieve that look, and so hopefully you'll be able to replicate that too if you want to. Alright, let's start with settings because that's an easy thing to go over, so my camera object here. I'm using Ian Hubert's free Shakeify add-on which adds a um, very nice dynamic camera shake. So I've got that applied with these settings of influence and scale and speed. Uh, the main important things are my focal length um, is animated throughout the short which means that I change it dynamically. And you'll want to do this, um, I'll put up a clip right now where William Fortune showcases what focal length does. Essentially. It does something different from when you just move your camera closer or further. The background gets compressed or spread out depending on how zoomed in you are with your focal length. Going long really compresses that background, it really accentuates your depth of field. It gives you a very different look. Like, pay attention to the foreground here, foreground and the midground. Notice how out of focus those are with all that depth of field. But here, uh, the foreground is not, there's no depth of field at all. Consider changing this around as you go, because it will make a pretty big difference to how stuff looks. I don't change it way too much throughout this short, but I have a baseline of 85mm, sometimes we zoom out a little bit, sometimes we zoom in a little bit more. When we're trying to achieve something like the dolly zoom, then what we do there is that we simultaneously zoom in the focal length while moving our camera away from the subject and keeping a similar framing, and as you can see here, the background basically just gets crushed in behind the character. It creates a sense of the world kind of coming down around them, or like closing in on them. Um, and you can achieve the opposite where the world light opens out if you do the opposite thing of moving the camera closer and zooming out your focal length. And um, mainly keeping it as a high number because um, cinema usually are going for like high numbers, at least like 85mm focal lengths. Um, but yeah, you want to dynamically change that around to fit the scene um, that you're going for. And like from shot to shot, feel free to zoom around your focal length. It's a lot more interesting than just uh, moving your camera closer or further away. It adds this feel like um, somebody's manually zooming a camera in and out. So. It's very nice. This depth of field is a very important setting. So firstly, I've got my focus object set on an empty. If we just let this play a little bit, you can see that this empty, I have keyframed and animated to follow with wherever I want my focus to be. So basically the camera is always focused on wherever the empty is in the scene. Which is really useful because um, you can't change the focus object dynamically. This allows to have very dynamic um, depth of field where we can just seamlessly shift around where we're focused on. Um, which is very nice because like, if I have a shot where I want this guy blurred out and then this guy, this guy in focus, we can do that. And then if I want to do the opposite, we just shift that back over there and now this guy's blurred out and that guy's in focus. Um, so I'd highly recommend that. That's a really, really good workflow and if you want to, you can set up a track to constraint in the um, constraints tab and you can make it so that the camera also moves to look at where the empty object is, where the focal point is. But I don't always like it to be in center frame, so that's why I turned it off for this project. If stops, we've got that at 2. We've got very, very um, high amount of depth of field just um, because there's a lot of um, lower quality assets in this scene which I'm just kind of masking out and it's just allowing for very intense and filmic looking blur which honestly is like kind of a cheap but cool way to get um, very, very visceral looking focus so you can really see what's in focus in the camera and it showcases my dynamic empty object moving around a lot better than if it was just um, quite linear focus and it just like directs the audience's eyes to like look at certain things um, so it's a very useful thing in cinema. We've got blades at 8 and basically what this is going to do is it's going to give us octagonal bokeh, um, a bunch of little fairy lights so um, usually this is at 0 which means that we'll just get um, circular bokeh um, but yeah we want octagonal which looks like close to circular but it's a bit more realistic as to what you might actually see. Rotation I have not um, messed with that. Um, and then this one is quite a um, significant one actually. Ratio, if we set this to 2, we give ourselves an anamorphic lens. And you might have heard this term thrown around. Basically means that we are shooting at double the width and then crushing it back down. And it means that we have some very interesting depth of field and interesting bokeh, which is more uh, oval in shape and um, it's squished in. And so that looks very interesting, it looks very cinematic. A lot of movies use it, so we're quite accustomed to seeing that sort of look with our depth of field and bokeh and such um, in cinema. And so, yeah, I'd recommend that if you just want to play around. It's not a huge thing, but it does make a difference. And if you can see if I zoom in here on this shot especially, we can see all of that bokeh and it's all being crushed in because of the anamorphic lens as well. And we can see our eight blades and all that, all just coming together to create quite a... Um, quite a grounded camera feel, um, it looks it looks very cinematic, it looks very much like a real camera even if the assets aren't 
incredibly well done or even if my animation isn't incredible. And yet, with, in terms of the camera movement, I basically, I just set up an angle, I set up a shot, and then I just track through through with it. And um, if I have something more elaborate planned out, I'll probably plan it out on paper. I um, had a shot list for this, which is why some of the shots are definitely a bit lackluster, but most of them are um, pretty decent, especially compared to the stuff that I used to make. This opening shot, and um, this one right here, just like a nice wide shot, establishing this um, high angle tracking, panning shot. Some close-ups which zoom in and then let the um, subject kind of walk into the camera and then we've got continuity between shots carrying the motion between these two. Yeah, it's all just a lot of experience and just a lot of um, input. You just like watch a lot of movies and then you get good at picking stuff out and you watch film essays, you watch tutorials on YouTube as to how this stuff gets put together. You figure out where to place people compositionally with your rule of thirds and um, with your balancing of frame and all of that, I'd highly recommend Blender Guru's compositional video guide. But yeah, essentially, um, some of it's just playing around, a lot of it's just playing around, because your first idea is usually not your best idea. And eventually you'll get some results that you'll hopefully be happy with. But yeah, just set up your shots how you think that you'd set it up if it was an actual movie being filmed, and you'll get something which looks a bit more like an actual movie that way. And you just gotta play around and experiment, and do your research and you'll get cool looking stuff eventually. Another thing which greatly contributes to how cinematic everything looks is your lighting. Um, I've got this custom Gobo spotlight. Uh, so this is giving us some fake caustics, some fake gold rays, which look very, very nice. And they're only fake because they're not like simulated um, as caustics. They're just, um, it's just a light with a texture mapped to it. This is the, the texture that I've got mapped to it. It's not way too complicated. I've got a couple of other fill lights and rim lights that are just scattered throughout the scene as well to do some nice backlighting and side lighting um, on characters when I want them to. And I've also got a nice sky texture. Um, this sky texture is very complicated, but it's just from an add-on. And what we can do with it is we can animate the time of day, which is quite useful because I switch around the time of day and the lighting quite a bit um, in this short, in sort of a time lapse or flashback style. So yeah, that was quite a useful thing. Another thing which contributes um, quite well to the cinematic look is actually all of these particles, these dust particles. You get them in real life, not necessarily to this extent in all places, but um, you do get dust in real life and when you've got a camera kind of focused in on very um, focused in on very small or intricate things, it looks very nice to have um, dust come up when you're at that scale. And so that all gets nicely bled out because of our low f-stops and um, definitely <laughs> should work on making your animation skills better than mine because it'll help you suspend disbelief a little bit more stop you breaking immersion and, and invest in some decent models and all of that but you can get away with a lot as you can see this is a very basic scene and I made it two minutes short out of the scene basically um, and it's not amazing but it's pretty good and so you can get away with a lot if you just use your camera intelligently and um, all of these tips that I've just talked about will help you take a little bit quite a long way but it would definitely be better if I had a better foundation to build off of. I had some good stuff to begin with, but it, it did fall off a little bit, I think. You strive for imperfection in 3D, in a way. Hope you got something out of it if you watched all the way to the end. Thank you very much for watching, and I shall see you in the next one. Let me know if there's anything that I missed out on. And yeah, consider subscribing if you enjoyed. Uh, over 90% of the people who watch my videos are not subscribed, so it would mean a lot. But that is fine. Um, it's been Yeeson, thanks so much for watching again, and goodbye.